All right, so from learning objective three, we learned about the general journal and all the journal entries that occur. These are a few of the journal entries that we would have done for Sierra Corporation uh, when they issued cash for common stock. This is how the journal entry would look. Cash got a debit, common stock account got a credit. When they, uh, when they borrowed that money, the note, note payable, uh, they got $5,000 in cash and now they have a note payable. We would have debited uh, cash and credited note payable. And then they use that cash to buy equipment. So we have $5,000 debit to equipment and a $5,000 credit to cash. So these are the first three transactions for uh, Sierra Corporation, which is the, it, we've been doing this since the beginning of chapter three. Um, and so these are the transactions that, this is how they would look in the journal. What happens to all of these numbers once they're in the journal? What happens? Well, that's the, uh, that's the uh, the lesson for chapter uh, for, for learning objective four. Okay, learning objective four basically means that after we um, after numbers go in the journal, they move to something called a general ledger. Okay, and the way we do that is we actually transfer uh, the number. We actually transfer the number and the account from the journal to uh, the, the account in, in the ledger. And that process is called posting. So this is gonna be what we're gonna be focused on right now, okay? So the ledger, first of all, is another really important book because, well, it used to be a huge book. It's now electronic form. Uh, but basically it's just, um, it's all the accounts in a company in one place, in a, in a in, you know, everything that the company has for accounts will be in a, used to be in a large book um, that you can see anything that happened in each particular account. So the ledger, every company has a ledger and ledgers have certain organization. They're organized first and foremost, like the classified balance sheet. <clears throat> so the asset accounts are listed first, which means if you look at a ledger, if it was a book like it used to be, uh, rather than electronic form, as soon as you opened up the book, the very first account you would see is the cash account because cash is always the first asset account listed uh, that you see. And so what that would mean is in that particular section of the ledger, only the activity that affected cash would be shown. Okay, so every time a journal entry was put to cash on the debit side, you would see it post in the ledger in the cash account on the debit side. Anytime cash was used and you saw that in the journal on the credit side, it would be posted in the ledger in the cash account on the credit side. And the ledger then gives us a balance. We know what the balance is in the account because simply speaking, <clears throat> for cash, all the debits to cash mean we had an increase in cash. And every time we have a credit to cash, there's a decrease. So the balance obviously is the difference, right? And so we're gonna be learning about that. Um, so the asset accounts are listed first and foremost in the order you would see them on the classified balance sheet. So uh, in this case, the cash account would be listed if you turned the page to, uh, to the next section of the ledger, then the next asset account would be there and the activity in that account would be shown only, only, okay. Um, and then if you turn the page again uh, to the next section, there would be the next asset account and only what happened in that account would be shown in the ledger. So that's basically how a ledger is organized and everything. Each of these accounts will have its own section in the ledger and it basically summarizes all the activity in that account, okay? The second set of accounts that are listed are the liability accounts. In the order you would see them on the classified balance sheet. So your current liabilities would be listed first uh, and then your long-term liabilities would be listed later on. But each of these liability accounts would have their own separate section in the ledger. 
So we would see if we turn to the note payable uh, account in the ledger, we would only see the activity in notes payable on that page. Okay. Um, that's it. We wouldn't see any other activity because that particular page is dedicated to the notes payable account. Okay. If we turn to the next section or the next page, we might see just all the activity in the accounts payable account and only the activity in the accounts payable account. Uh, not only would we see the activity in these accounts, we would also see what the balances are in those accounts at that time. So we actually go to the ledger to find the balances in the accounts. Okay. So again, all the liability accounts would be listed separately. They'd have their own little section. And then you would also see what the balance is in that account. Um, the last set of, of accounts that's listed uh, are classified under stockholders equity, but actually they're sort of broken into a few uh, things. First of all, uh, common stock, retained earnings, and dividends would be listed first, okay? So you would have <clears throat> a separate section for common stock and only the activity in common stock would show there. You would turn to the next section to be retained earnings and you would see all the times retained earnings has been affected and its balance. And then the dividends account is grouped up with these folks here, okay, with these accounts here. The revenue accounts would be listed after that. And in this case, our company only has one revenue account. So when you turn to that account in the ledger, you would see all the activity in revenue and only revenue. And then each individual expense account would have its own little section in the ledger and you would see everything that happened in each expense account separately. So if you wanted to know what the salaries and wages expense was, you could look into the ledger under salaries and wages expense, you would see the activity in the account and the balance. Now remember when I say the activity in the account, we're talking about exactly what we put into the journal. Whatever we put into the journal that affected that account will be shown in the ledger under that account. And you'll see how that works. So when I say account, uh, as you should know, right, we're talking the individual names of the accounts, okay? Um, and every company has a listing of accounts. We call it a chart of accounts. And as you see, Sierra Corporation, has all these accounts listed under assets. We already know um, the accounts that are in red have already been introduced to you and explained. The accounts that are in black are uh, going to be explained in more detail in chapter four, but they are classified under, in this case, all of these are asset accounts. And this is the actual uh, way they would show on a classified balance sheet. But as you know, cash is a name of an account, calcio is a name of an account, blah, blah, blah. So each of these accounts would have its own little separate section in the ledger, only showing the activity. It's sort of like having your savings account and your checking account, right? Whatever happens in your checking account is not showing up on your savings account record. But whatever's happening in your savings account is not showing up on your checking account either. So you, you basically separate them and look at them as two different accounts, even though you own both accounts, right? But if you say, what's your balance in your savings account, you would go to your savings account and say, this is the balance in the savings account. Uh, you wouldn't even think about looking at your checking account if I asked you what the balance of your savings account was. Same thing here. If I ask you what the balance of cash is, you don't have to take into consideration any other account because they're all separate. They're all separate. Uh, the balance in each of these accounts are separate from each other. Okay. Very much like I just said, your savings account is a separate balance than your checking account balance. Two separate things. So we, we look at the ledger as a place where all these accounts are sort of, has its own little separate section and its own little balance. The liability accounts for Sierra Corporation are listed. Of course, the ones in red have been introduced to you already. The ones in the black ink are coming uh, in chapter four. Accounts, uh, sorry, the, uh, the stockholders equity accounts are listed. Again, the ones that are in red, you know, the one in black, you don't. Uh, this is a very simple company, thank God. So it only has one revenue account, service revenue, but you, uh, companies have a lot of different revenue accounts. 
And so you don't have to have just one, even if you are small, uh, you could have more than one. And then expense accounts are listed last. As you see, you already know a couple of expenses. Um, you're gonna be introduced to several more as we go into next, um, uh, next chapter. But this basically is the chart of accounts. In other words, the, this, is, this company, Sarah Corporation, has each of these individual accounts to keep track of in its ledger. So let's see how it's done. Like I said, the first thing that happens is you put the entry in the journal. On October the 1st for Sierra Corporation, we debited cash for $10,000 and we credited common stock for $10,000. That's in the journal, okay? The journal has page numbers. So this is page one of the journal, they call it J1, okay? Well, what happens to these numbers after they get, uh, after we put them in the journal? Well, they transfer to their individual ledger accounts. So when you open up the general ledger, the very first account you'll see is the cash account. Each account will have its own account number, okay? Um, and so cash is the first account both in the ledger and in terms of it's the account number, okay? Um, and so what happens is this $10,000 debit entry in the journal will be moved to the ledger account for cash for the same date, okay? There's gonna be that debit that shows post, this is basically posting, transferring the number from the journal into the ledger based on the correct column that it should be posted in. So if it's in the journal as a debit uh, side entry, you are gonna transfer it to the debit side of the account. Now remember this, like all the other accounts only have two sides, a debit and credit side. So uh, you only have two choices. Uh, the best choice is if you put it in the journal on the debit side, you're gonna transfer into ledger in its account on the debit side. Um, these reference columns, you're not going to see them a lot. I don't think you see them at all in any of your uh, homework in this uh, chapter uh, or in this book. Um, but the reference uh, numbers are just ways in which they cross-reference. So in, um, in the journal, cash is account number 101. That's the reference number because it's account number 101. Okay, and in the ledger, this particular entry on October the 1st happened uh, on in the journal, page one, journal, page one. So here's the account number, here's the journal page number, and that's basically how they reference it. We don't have to worry about that uh, because it's, it doesn't, I don't think it's in, like I said, it's not in any of your homework, but that's just explaining because it is uh, shown here in the book. Now, the balance, the only thing that's different about a ledger uh, is after we put transfer, rather, information from the journal into the ledger, uh, now we can actually tell what the balance in the account is, okay? And so here, after we transfer this entry into the ledger, we now know that cash has a $10,000 balance. But very specifically, how we say that is we actually list the column um, that's bigger. So this is a $10,000 debit balance. Okay. All right. So that's the first entry that we do. And this is shown to you. Is it shown to you? Yeah, it's kind of, it is um, on page 111. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so this is page 111. This is uh, exactly what we just looked at earlier, which was event one, um, cash for common stock, right? So this is the journal entry we looked at, right? A debit to cash on October the 1st, a credit to common stock on October the 1st. And then because they actually can't show you each individual uh, ledger account, they put both of them here in this form. The form looks like a T. So they call it a T account, but all it is is that the cash account would be listed. It has a debit side and it has a credit side. 
because this $10,000 debit to cash will be posted into the ledger under the cash account on the debit side of the account. So this just shows um, a rough way of how things would be moving from the uh, journal into the ledger. And the same thing here for common stock. Common stock would have its own page or section in the ledger, separate from the cash account, separate from all the other accounts. Like I said, it's almost like, you know, thinking of, of your savings account as a separate account than your checking account, two different accounts, two different uh, balances, et cetera. So in essence, this $10,000 credit to common stock would need to be posted into the common stock account in the ledger, but because we actually credited common stock in the journal, we're going to move the $10,000 on the credit side of common stock in the ledger. So you're simply matching. If it's a $10,000 debit to this account, when you post it into the ledger, it's gotta be on the debit side. In this case, this is a credit side debit, so you're gonna put it on the credit side. Again, there's only two sides to every account. The left side is the debit side, the right side is the credit side. It's true in every single account. They only have two sides, a left and a right side, a debit side and a credit side, that's it. You're just making sure that if your journal entry shows it on the debit side, you post it on the debit side of that account. If the journal entry shows it on the credit side, you post it on the credit side. Mm -hmm. So this starts on page 111 and it keeps going. Matter of fact, there's all of the transactions for um, a Sierra Corporation are shown here. So it's, this is well worth, and this is now we're page 112 and we'll be doing this. Um, and so here, remember event number two, they borrowed money. Uh, we did some analysis. We said, okay, we had more cash. We have more notes payable. And now we know after we do our debit and credit analysis that the journal entry would be a debit to cash and a credit to notes payable. Okay, that's the journal entry. Well, where does the number, where do the numbers go from there? They get posted into their accounts in the ledger. Again, the cash account, I mean, this is all separate pages. So you have to kind of make believe it's very separate uh, parts here. You're looking at two different accounts here. Well, here on October the 1st, because we have a new transaction, we have an additional $5,000 debit to transfer into cash. So this $5,000 is in addition to what's already there. So we move that $5,000 debit to the cash account on the debit side, okay? Because we had two transactions, right? Two events, two transactions, and both transactions had debits to cash. So both debits are gonna show in the cash account. And this uh, credit to notes payable is gonna be posted on the credit side of notes payable. Remember, there's a debit side and a credit side to every single account. If it's in the uh, journal on that side, you make sure you post it on that side of the uh, account. Okay, so debit side, credit side. This goes on the debit side of cash. This goes on the credit side of our notes payable. Let me just stop for a moment and ask if anyone can tell me now that we're done with two events and you've seen how the journal entries play out and now how they're posted, can someone tell me what the balance in cash is? Open question. Can someone tell me what the balance in cash is? Would it be $15,000? You have most of it correct. You're missing one little thing. Remember, in accounting, we have to tell ever we have to tell people what side the balance is on. So a debit of fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. So yeah. So we would say that cash has a debit balance of fifteen thousand because the balance is on the debit side, right? Now it's just like your checking account. If you put more debits on the, on, if you put more uh, postings on the debit side that adds to the cash balance, right? But then again, if you put on the credit side, it lowers the cash balance, but there's always one balance in the account, yes? So 
keep track of that because I'm going to ask you this as we go. <laughs> Not you specifically, Hope, but just in general, I want everyone to talk um, to make sure you're getting this. Right. Let's move on. Please pay attention. Oh, drugs are bad. All right, so event number three here happened on the 2nd of October. So uh, we had used, there's a word used there, same as spent, $5,000 in cash to buy the equipment. We did our analysis. We have more equipment and less cash. We know now that the journal entry would be a debit to equipment for $5,000 and a credit to cash for $5,000. Yes? All right, the next step then is we have to post that into their accounts in the ledger. So we have this $5,000 debit to the our equipment account on October the 2nd. So October 2nd, $5,000 debit to equipment gets posted here. Remember the little T account simply means that every account has two sides, a debit side and a credit side. Okay. So this was on the debit side in the journal, it's gonna be on the debit side of the account when we post it into the ledger. But look at cash, cash actually has a credit of $5,000. So when we actually transfer this, it's gonna be on the credit side of cash. It's on the credit side of the journal, it's gonna be on the credit side of cash. Well, we know that the credit side of cash shows we don't have it, right? We, we have less. So, let me go to anyone else who's willing to, uh, to talk. What is my balance in cash now after this? We're October 2nd, we just recorded this. What's the balance in cash now? I don't have any candy to tempt you with your answer. Ah, uh, you know, so I just, you know. I don't know. Would it be a debit of 10,000? Thank you, yes. It's a debit balance of 10,000, okay? So cash has a debit balance of $10,000 right now because we had, after three transactions, right? We can't ignore anything that happened in the past. You wouldn't wanna do that if you, when you got paid, <laughs> ignore your past paycheck, oh, that never existed, right? It's there, it's like, again, every time you get paid, it's added to your balance. When you start writing checks and spending, it lowers your balance, right? But there's only one balance in your checking account. Same thing here. There's only going to be one balance in every account. You just have to state what the balance is and what side it's on. Okay. So in this case, we had um, we have a ten thousand dollar debit balance in cash because we had fifteen thousand dollars of increases and five thousand dollars of decreases. The balance is going to be on the debit side, right? The ten thousand dollars is on the debit side. I'm just going to put K here because I, I just can't write on, with my computer. Right. So, uh, and that's a horrible uh, K, by the way. But mm -hmm. looks like okay. But anyway, it's it is ten thousand. So it's a ten thousand dollar debit balance in cash. Because everyone understand that. All right. So we're going to keep going, and there's going to be more. So be prepared. Although this could be scary for some. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm practicing my evil laugh for Halloween. Okay, great. You don't have to applaud. It's fine. I'll take it as a good thing. All right. <laughs> Event number four. Uh, here we have Sierra Corporation. They received twelve hundred dollars cash advance from a client. Uh, so we said, okay, this is this is real. We have more cash, but now we owe that. Uh, client a bunch of services and we know that that's unearned service revenue in the journal how it would show up is a debit to cash so again it's still october the second in this case because the date it's chronological in the journal as you know um we have a debit to cash of 1200 and a credit to unearned service revenue for 1200 so these are the entries in the journal we have to then post those into their accounts in the ledger. And again, these are separate accounts. They'd be in separate sections. You know, they just put them on the screen together just so it's, this is easier to present for, for that. So we have a debit to cash of $1,200 that needs to be added to the debit side of the cash account. 
and we have a credit to unearned service revenue for 1200, which you see is on the credit side. Remember, every time you look at these accounts, there are two sides, the debit side and the credit side. We're simply posting debit side, credit side. Every account has the same two sides. If you put it in the journal on the debit side, it goes in the debit side of that account in the ledger. If you, again, you posted it, um, in this case, the journal entry was a credit to unearned service revenue. When it gets posted, it'll post on the credit side, okay? So there we go. So now what's the balance in cash? Open question, who's next? You would have a debit on cash account for 11,200. Okay, so it's a debit balance of eleven thousand two hundred dollars. That's correct. Okay, debit balance eleven thousand two hundred. Thank you. Good job. All right, let's keep going here. Our event number five occurred on October the third. Okay, Sierra Corporation received cash because they performed guided services. That's what they do for a living. So we have definitely have more cash. We now have more revenue. Uh, the journal entry was a debit to cash for 10,000, a credit to service revenue for 10,000. We have to transfer this or post it into their, their accounts in the ledger. Uh, again, there's a $10,000 debit to cash for the 3rd of October. Remember the dates are important here. So we have some type of cross-reference. Um, so October 3rd, a $10,000 debit to cash. That's this right here, gets posted here. And this $10,000 to service revenue is a credit to service revenue. So it's gonna go on the credit side of the service revenue account. Uh, okay, now we go back to our question. What's the, what is the balance in cash? Would it be a debit of $10,000 of cash to make the balance 2000 or 20,200? Okay, well, the posting is, uh, is there. I got a little confused with that, but the, the actual balance in the cash account is $21,200 debit balance. Everyone see that? $21,200 debit balance. When you add up your debits and subtract out your credits in the cash account, that's how it works, right? The balance will be $21,200 debit balance. The balance is on the debit side. Does everyone agree with that? Okay, good. Thank you, Devin. Uh, all right, let's go ahead to event number six here. On uh, October the 3rd, we paid rent. You know what happens when you pay rent? You have less cash. Um, and not only you have less cash, you actually have less stockholders equity because you have an expense. Expenses take away from retained earnings, as you know, they take away from the profit of the company. So the journal entry for this is a debit to rent expense, October 3rd, debit to rent expense, credit to cash, okay? Um, so again, knowing what column it is, when you actually do post it into their accounts in the ledger, keep it in the column. This $900 debit goes to rent expense. So it's on the debit side, right, of the rent expense account. This $900 credit to cash is gonna go on, um, on the credit side of the cash account showing less. So uh, now what's our balance? I'm gonna need a little calculator to make sure I'm right. You would have a, like a debit of $20,300. Um, no, I would not agree with that. The, the, the balance from the cash account? Yeah, like to get, because you, if you're adding the 5,000 and, and the 900, 900 together, that would be 5,900. And if you subtract that from the 20, um, from the 26,200, it will be, together it would be the total of 20,300. Right, so I, I agree with you with the number, $20,300. Um, it's a debit balance, so we say it's a $20,300 debit balance. Oh. Yeah, the, balance is gonna, the balance can only be on one side of the account, 
And in the cash account, we're always going to have a balance on the credit. And the debit. So twenty thousand three hundred dollar debit balance. Account. All right, okay. Thank you for that. Yep. All right. So we're moving on to event number seven. <clears throat> We paid $600 for an insurance policy. So here we have more prepaid insurance and we have less cash. In the journal, we put a debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash for $600 for the 4th of October. So again, this debit uh, for prepaid insurance is gonna be posted on the debit side of the prepaid insurance account. This credit to cash is going to go down here on the credit side of the cash account. So now, what is the balance in cash? Who can tell me the balance in cash? Someone new and exciting? Or at least new? <laughs> if you can't be exciting. It's a debit of $19,700. Excellent. Yes. Thank you, Mike. So it's a debit balance of $17,700. Um, $19,700. Yes. Yeah. I just had a little, uh, my phone went off for a second. <laughs> so the heck with my memory today. All right. Yes. Excellent. Nice job. Nice job. Does everyone see that, by the way? Does everyone see how we got that balance? All right, event number eight uh, is we paid for month uh, for supplies on account, on account. And this happened on October the 5th and we bought a whole mess of supplies, $2,500 of supplies. So we have a lot more supplies, but now we have to pay that later. So we have more accounts payable. Our journal entry was a debit to supplies for $2,500 and a credit to accounts payable for 2,500. Uh, when we go ahead and transfer those numbers into their accounts, uh, the debit here would be posted um, to supplies on the debit side for October 5th and accounts payable would have a credit of for October 5th posted in its account. The event number nine here is not an event because we simply hired people. When we interview people, hire people, we don't give them anything up front, so it's not a transaction. If it's not a transaction, there's no accounting to be done. The 10th event showed a Sierra Corporation paying a dividend, cash dividend on the 20th of October. Uh, so remember, dividends take away from retained earnings. We subtract them out of the retained earnings statement. Uh, so they take away, right? And of course, we have less cash if we paid cash. So our journal entry for this was a debit to dividends and a credit to cash. Um, so the debit to dividends will get posted in the dividends account on the debit side of the dividends account. This credit to cash will be posted on the credit side of the cash account. So now, what is the balance in cash? New and exciting, new and exciting. Come on. You know the rule, you know the you know how it works. Hey man. Is a debit balance of 19,200? Excellent. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Debit balance of $19,200. Great. Everyone see that? And the very last event that Sierra Corporation did was, uh, happened on the 26th of October. Um, and they paid $4,000 uh, of salary at that point. So. Uh, again, salaries and wages are an expense. Expenses take away from the profit and retained earnings of the company. And of course, we have less cash. Uh, when we actually need to put it in the journal, uh, we debit the expense account. Salaries and wages expense gets a $4,000 debit 
cash gets the credit for 4,000. So when we post these into their accounts in the ledger, we'll see again, cash is a very, very busy account. This credit gets posted on the credit side of cash. The debit for uh, salaries and wages expense gets posted there. And uh, so last chance for someone to give me a balance for cash. So I'm a new, let's make it new and boring. Um, new and exciting isn't working. The cash account has a debit balance of 15,200. Excellent, excellent. I give you a high five, but you know, we're in a pandemic. Ah, okay, yeah, that's great. Nice job. Debit balance, $15,200. Does everyone see that? Everyone understand that? Okay. Well, guess what? You're going to see it again. Let's, um, this is what all, these are the journal entries that happen in Sierra Corporation for those 11 events. Half of them are listed here. The other half are listed here. If you have your book with you, they're all listed neatly on page 117. But the journal, like I said, is the very, very first step. Once they get put into the journal, you have to transfer or post them into their accounts in the ledger. So look what the ledger looks like for Sierra Corporation after all this. We were focused on the cash account. I kept asking, what's the balance in the cash account? And we ended with a $15,200 balance and that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Actually, we look in the ledger for the balances in the accounts. So if, you know, way back in chapter one and chapter two, you were doing income statements and retained earning statements and balance sheets, and they were just giving you the numbers. But in reality, if, we, if you were asked to do it for a company, you would look in the ledger. The ledger has all the balances, okay. So what the cash balances uh, was correct, 15,000 to our debit balance. As you see, all the other accounts in, are, are listed in the order. So cash, that you'd see them on a the balance sheet. Cash, supplies, prepaid insurance and equipment, all the asset accounts have debit balances, yes? Supplies has a $2,500 debit balance, prepaid insurance, $600 debit balance, equipment, $5,000 debit balance. But now we get to the liabilities, right? Notes payable, accounts payable, Unearned service revenue are liability accounts. Liability accounts have credit side balances. And so if you were asked, what's our accounts payable balance? You would say, oh, we have a $2,500 credit balance in accounts payable. That's how much we owe. Okay. Um, so liability accounts will have balances in the ledger on their credit, on the credit side. Okay. Common stock, as you know, is a stockholder's equity account. And like the liability accounts, their balances are also on the credit side. However, dividends, as you know, takes away from retained earnings. So <clears throat> dividends have a normal balance or regular balance on the debit side of the dividends account. Revenue is where the profit of the company is. Remember, service revenue or revenue pays for all the expenses. And then what's remaining is the profit. And that profit ends up being retained earnings. And so service revenue will always have a balance on the credit side of its account. And then your expenses here, both salaries, wages, expense and rent expense take away from that. And so their balances are gonna be on the debit side of the account. Okay. Do we understand that each of these accounts are separate and each of them have balances? Just like I was trying to explain to you, if I ask for what your balance in your savings account is, you're not going to give me the balance in any other account that you are, that you have, whether it's a checking account or you have a retirement account or some other account. You're not going to tell me any of those balances because I asked specifically for this. Same thing on a ledger. In, in accounting, when they ask for a specific balance, you're going to be looking in the ledger and that's going to be the balance. And it's going to be either on the debit or credit side, depending on the type of account it is. Okay. So how do we know, how do we, you know, so this is basically the posting, you know, system. Um, you know, we're gonna ask the question after this uh, objective, how do we know the ledger is balanced? And we're gonna get to that in the next part of class, okay. But right now, does everyone understand that, uh, how the general ledger would be read? How these numbers got into these accounts? 
right? They all came from the journal. So the very first thing that we're going to be doing, um, the do it exercise, and actually it's, it's really not done very well here because um, I don't think it's done at all. Yeah, it's not done at all. So I'm actually going to go to your uh, to your book online to show you how it's done. But let me just read here. This is Fatal. And this, as you know, is the journal for Fatal because you see all the journal entries. Okay. So on July the 1st, first, they had a debit to cash and a credit to common stock. Uh, that's a very, that's very simple. That's very simple. That's how corporations start. Always with cash for common stock. You're going to see that Every time there's a corporation that starts, cash for common stock is always the case. And then on the ninth, it looks like they earned some money on account. So service revenue, accounts receivable got a debit of 6,000, service revenue got a credit for 6,000. Now, again, this, this debit in accounts receivable means they're waiting to receive the money in the future. The future is any day after the 9th of July. Well, on the 24th of July, they got paid for some of that. They received money on an account that was billed previously. And so they have more cash, but now they have less accounts receivable. Because they were waiting to receive this, they got part of it. So if you're increasing accounts receivable when you're expecting to receive money, don't forget you have to decrease accounts receivable when you actually get the money, when you actually receive the money. So these, they're asking you to post the transactions in the account. So again, I really can't do it very, very well here. So I'm just going to show you again. Uh, cash would have a $30,000 debit here for July 1st. Uh, common stock would have a credit here for July 1st. Accounts receivable would have a debit here for the 9th of July. Service revenue would have a credit here for the 9th of July. Again, everything is done by date. Uh, cash would have a debit here for the 24th of July for 4,000. Accounts receivable would have a credit here for the $4,000 credit on, on the 24th. Now, once it's all said and done, and I'm going to switch to the Wiley so you can actually see what this looks like. Okay, so if you are in your in your book, this is on page one eighteen. But this is what the posting would look like. This is the this is the Fatel's journal that we just went over in that last slide. But as you see, this would be the solution. There would be two debits to cash that would need to be posted. There would be a, a credit to common stock that needs to be posted. There's a debit on the ninth for accounts receivable. There's a credit on the twenty fourth for accounts receivable and service revenue on the ninth had a credit. So this is how we would do posting. I would take it one step further. Let me open up the floor and ask you what the balance is in the cash account for this company. Open question. Cash has a debit balance of $34,000. Excellent, perfect, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and my follow-up question to that, to someone um, new, is what's the balance in accounts receivable? That would be a um, $2,000 debit balance. Excellent, yes, it's a $2,000 debit balance in accounts receivable. Remember, accounts receivable is an asset. Assets have balances on the debit side. So here we have a $6,000 debit, $4,000 credit, the balance is $2,000 debit balance. The debit balance, the debit side is always going to be larger than the credit. Okay. Nice job. Nice job. How do you, um, let me get back to the main screen here for a second and ask you how you sort of, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the posting process? Okay. I mean, it's not that bad, right? I mean, you just have to make sure, and that's why I was trying to explain it in as deep, much detail as I can and repeat over and over again, because some of you actually watch these things, uh, these videos after. Um, and again, the more you hear it, maybe it'll sink in. Some already got it, that's great, but some didn't, hopefully it'll sink. 
And so the repetition is, is meant for that. But if it's in, again, you're simply transferring the numbers from the journal into the separate accounts in the ledger. And those accounts are kept separately. You know, you know, just like your savings account is separate from your checking account, which is sec separate from a retirement account, which is separate from another account that you might have. So each of these are separate. They would have their own little spots in the ledger. The ledger is a really, I mean, in, in the days, it was a real big ass book. I mean, it was huge, huge, huge book, as were journals. And when I took the class, when I was <laughs> way back in the day, we literally had these, there was a, we had a very thick book. And we had at least two different workbooks we would have to carry because that's everything was done by hand. You're lucky we have this idea we can actually do all this stuff on Wiley. It's still a pain in the you know what, but at least you have the the benefit of of the computer you know system helping you out. Of course, the good news is in reality this is all done by computer. Um, the accounting software that that everyone, even if a simple accounting software like QuickBooks they uh, as soon as you put the transactions in it automatically posts to the accounts in the ledger so uh, but you have to understand it in order to understand what the software is doing you know, remember we program the software not the other way around right we're in charge so um so that's why it's important to kind of go through the process um we only have one more thing to do that last question that i asked you know now that you understand that all the uh, accounts in the ledger will have a balance. That last question is, how do we know the ledger is balanced? How do we know the ledger is balanced? Well, that's the very last part of this uh, chapter. So you ready for it? Okay, and it's actually quite, it's logical. You, you, it's very logical. Okay. So first of all, let me go back to that uh, picture of the of the of the ledger here for for Sierra Corporation. This is on uh, page one eighteen in your book, if you have your book with you. Uh, and as you see, we have the accounts that are listed here: cash, supplies, prepaid equipment, etc., with their balances. This is the exact um, same order of the accounts that you would see them on, you know, either an income statement or a balance sheet, depending on what statement you're doing, okay? The order you, you would see exactly from the ledger, same order, okay? Um, so as you notice here, you have your asset accounts that have all these debit balances, right? Uh, you also know that dividends has a debit balance and your expenses have debit balances. So does you have all these accounts that have debit balances? Well, in reality, if we did all of our work right, all these debit balances would equal the same amount of all the accounts that have credit balances. So your liabilities have credit balances. Common stock has a credit balance, as you know, and service revenue has a credit balance. So if we did all of our things right, then our debit balances and credit balances in the ledger would equal. Would equal. So we do that by doing something called a trial balance. Okay, uh, a trial balance basically is a statement that shows us the accounts that have debit balances and the accounts that have credit balances and whether they actually balance, okay? And so this is a very nice one. It's on page 119 in your book. Uh, so page 119 um, in your book. Show what the trial balance is for Sierra Corporation. Notice the accounts that are listed here are in the exact same order, the exact same order you saw them on, on the previous page. Right? In that previous slide, I showed you the big picture of the ledger. This is the exact same order the accounts were listed on the ledger. And so you don't have to think too much in reality about the order of the accounts. They will be in, in in the real world, they'll be given to you because the ledger will already be organized that way. Um, in this book, they actually want you to practice, they actually want you to practice putting the accounts in the order that they would be. Um, and so you might be getting some questions that actually have all of these out of order and you need to put them in order. It's a pain. But, um, but I think it's something you can handle. So again, your asset accounts, cash, supplies, prepaid insurance equipment, 
all have debit balances. So this statement only has two columns, a debit column and a credit column. Your asset account balances are all debit balances. You also know your dividends as a debit balance. And you also know each and every expense account has a debit balance. So those are the balances would show in the debit side. On the credit side, you would have your liability accounts also having credit balances would be your common stock account and your revenue account. They all have credit balances. So you simply, once you make your list of accounts and put the balances where they're supposed to be on the debit or credit side, you simply add them up. And as you see here, what you should see, and in most cases you, you will, the debit side balances total up to the exact same as the credit side balances. So the totals are equal, okay? Um, and that's important to sort of know, okay? Again, everyone understand why these debits are shown because this, all of these accounts, if you looked at these accounts, which are all asset accounts, if you looked at those accounts in the ledger, they would have a debit balance. So thus they go in the debit column. All of your um, liability accounts, as you know, if you looked in the ledger for these liabilities, the balances would be on the credit side. So they simply would go on the credit side here in your trial balance. That's all you're really doing and you're adding them up. Okay, so it's actually quite, quite good. Quite easy. Your do it exercise, again, is one of those things where they, they give you a company, in this case, it's Snowgo company, and they're saying, look, here's all the accounts. And notice they're, they're in every single way they're put here. They're all in, uh, in any type of order. And what they want you to do is here is put together a trial balance, what they call in good form. Now, in reality, you wouldn't be just given accounts like this. You'd actually just look in the ledger and the accounts would would be in the order you want them to be, and you'd simply just put it there. But, you know, in academia, they want to make sure you're learning, and um, so they, they're asking you for, for you to put them in the order that they're supposed to be. Well, you know that the order is, at, is assets first, and they'd be at the same as the balance sheet order. So you have to look for your asset accounts. Equipment is an asset account. Accounts uh, receivable is an asset account. Cash is an asset account. Prepaid insurance is an asset account. That's it. So those are your, your four asset accounts. What order would they be on the balance sheet? Uh, would exactly would be the same order they would be in the uh, ledger. So you know the cash account would be listed first. Accounts receivable would be second. Prepaid insurance third, and equipment fourth. All of these balances would be on the debit side of its account. So when you actually prepare the trial balance you'll see that the assets are listed in the order we just went over and their balances are in the debit column. The next set of accounts are gonna be the liability accounts. In the order, you would see them on a balance sheet. In this case, you have the notes payable, you have the accounts payable, and you have salaries or wages expense up here. So all of those accounts, if you looked at looked for them in the led, uh, in the uh, ledger, those balances would be on the credit side. So you would put them in, on the credit column and your trial balance. Uh, stockholders equity accounts, common stock, retained earnings, dividends. In this case, only two of the three. Common stock is here, dividends is here. Common stock balances on the credit side. Dividends, as you know, on the debit side. And your revenue account is listed on the credit side and your expense accounts are on the debit side. So for dividends uh, and expenses, they are like assets where on the debit, they're on the debit side. Okay. And so here you add them, you're adding these up. After you list them in the order they would be, and again, they would be giving you the expense order in the, in, uh, the, in, in the ledger. Uh, the fact that your book asks you to put these things together, if you get your order wrong, because Wiley has it the opposite way, that doesn't mean you're wrong, <laughs> because they didn't actually give you the order, <laughs> and you're guessing. But as long as those expenses are last, and as long as your expense balances are on the debit side, you're okay, okay, in my book.
So uh, then you add up all your credits, and in this case, they, they balance as well. Okay. And that is how we know that our, uh, that our ledger is balanced. All the debit balances equal all the credit balances. We simply make that list, put the balances in the right column, add them up, should work. So, how do you feel about that? Not too bad? Not too shabby? Okay. All right, so uh, are there any questions in general? 